Hi guys, this is going to be a video uh, about writing your wage journal, probably for the first time um, in Business Central. Um, so if you've done it on NAV, it's going to be exactly the same process as NAV. <clears throat> but if you've previously done it on Sage or Zero, for example, and you just come into Dynamics, I'm going to show you how to prepare your chart of accounts um, and how to translate your old journal to what is a Dynamics journal. So this is an example of a wage journal. Um, very typically, you get your nominals, you get your descriptions, and you get your debits and credits. And they should, of course, balance out to zero, uh, which if it doesn't, it's not going to let you post the journal. Um, so the system will keep you in check there. In Dynamics, you would be used to the positive and negative instead of debit and credit. So a credit is a negative and a debit is a positive. However, in Business Central, they've actually made it much friendlier and, and how people would be used to with debits and credits. So if we just take a quick look at what a general journal looks like. So a general journal is where you do your standard journaling um, and a wage journal is considered a general journal. So to access general journals, you click on your light bulb and you can either search for general journal or just a tip. If you just search for the first few letters of each word, it will still find general journal as well. So we just open up the general journal. So if you've not modified this page, this is what it will look like. So previously, this was a long list and we'll, we'll look how it was previously and we'll look at what uh, Microsoft have tried to achieve now by simplifying the general journal. So very simply, we've got the account numbers, account name, description and debit and credit. And then at the top, we have the document number and we have the posting date. So one of the things that I want you to do, uh, and this is just to safeguard and making sure that you are not accidentally posting VAT, uh, doing general journals, which is possible. I want you to right click, choose columns, and then I want you to add. So to add the box, to add the VAT amount column, you need to click on the line first and then select the box. And then what you're going to see is a load more columns appear. So this is how a general journal used to look in Dynamics. Um, looks much messier. It does make sense once you get used to it. Um, but this is how it used to look previously. So by enabling that column, the system's reverted to the previous way the system used to look. So now we need to just convert it back to how it did look. To achieve this, select page at the top. Click on show more columns. And then select page again and select show fewer columns. And what you have now is the screen that we had previously, except we've got the VAT amount here. So although we're not going to be entering any VAT on the journal because this journal has no VAT on it at all, um, we need this column here to make sure that we don't accidentally select a nominal that has some sort of VAT setup applied to it. Again, this is all set up in the chart of accounts, but this column is really important just to safeguard um, your journal. So I highly recommend that you just go through that process that I've just been through. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to basically convert this these nominals because the nominals are very likely not going to be identical to the nominals in um, Dynamics. So we just need to try and establish what are the new nominals that we're going to be using. Um, and to do this, we're going to go to the chart of accounts. So to get to the chart of accounts, hit this light bulb and just search for chart of accounts. And this is your chart of accounts. So this is where we now need to do the um, conversion from the old nominals to the new nominals. They may be the same, but they're very likely not to be the same. So I'm just going to minimize this screen ever so slightly. So I can place this one at the bottom. So first of all, then let's look for net wages. Um, to do this, we can just select search and search for wages. So we can see that the new net wages nominal is 2213. So I'm just going to very simply type in here 2213. And then we've got gross wages. So in this business central uh, that I'm logged into now, they don't actually have gross wages. They split gross wages out into two, which are admin wages and workshop wages. So for this exercise, I'm actually going to delete this one. You see there's no entries to it, so I can delete this. So if I just select delete. And then I'm going to edit this one. So I've selected edit list and I'm going to call this one gross wages. And this nominal is 6100. And then we've got a PAYE. So I'm going to search for PAYE and we can see that's 2211. And then I can see these ones here. Look, you see this 
this and this are all the same. So I'm just going to fill these ones in. So 2211, 2211. Uh, and then we need to look for pension. So I'm going to search for pension. So we've got employee pension liability, which is the same one. So it's 2212. This is essentially going to generate the liability that you'll have to pay off uh, when you make the payment from your bank. So what you'll notice here is that these nominals are um, less than 4,000, which typically means it's on the balance sheet. So it, your pension fund isn't actually considered a profit and loss item. It comes from the balance sheet. All you're doing when you're creating this journal is setting up the liability for the pension payment, which will come out of the bank in probably a, a week or so's time. And then we go down to Employers National Insurance. Okay, so this one isn't set up, so we actually need to set this one up. Now, I've seen companies do this in various ways. They either group the national insurance with the gross wages, so they actually have it within the same code, or they do it as per this example, and they actually separate the gross wage cost from the employer's national insurance. The advantage to separating it is on a profit and loss, you will actually be able to see the difference between your national insurance costs and your gross wages. So if we just look for gross wages, all we're going to do is select new line and we'll call this one 6101. And we'll say this is the employer's national insurance cost. Now you'll notice that these columns here, this is all to do with VAT and various other factors, but primarily revolves around VAT. Now you see this gross wages nominal code and the employer's national insurance cost nominal code. There is no setup here. And this is really important because we do not want there to be any sort of VAT interaction with this nominal code. So if you are creating new nominals that are related to journals that have no VAT interaction at all, you must make sure that these are left blank. So the employer's national insurance on Dynamics is 6101. And then we actually have a staff loan on this one. Um, so it's quite normal for you to loan money to staff and you may take the payment out of <clears throat> um, their net pay. So to reduce their loan, instead of paying them the money, you just hold the money back. Um, so I just need to create a new nominal because I don't think it's under here. So we'll, under loan accounts, we're gonna create a new one. And we'll call this one 2331. And we'll just call this one the staff loan account. Okay. <clears throat> so that's 2331. So what we've got now, we've, we've translated the old nominals from the old system to the new nominals on Dynamics. Like I said, it may be that they are identical. Uh, the odds are that they're not. Um, and it's just a process you've got to go through for the first time that you write this wage journal. So now we've got the journal with the new nominals and we're going to go back to the um, general journal. Now you'll notice that because I opened the chart of accounts up over the top of this, when I closed the chart of accounts, I just went straight back to this uh, general journals page. So now I'm going to start writing the journal. Um, I can do this by either actually searching for the name or if I know what the nominal code is and I do. So in this case, it's 2213. I'm just going to type in 2213 and you see it's bought up net wages. So I'm just going to go ahead and just populate the rest of this journal. So you see we've got gross wages, then we've got PAYE, then we've got the pension liability, then the PAYE, PAYE again, then we've got the employer's national insurance. And then we've got the loan. Okay. So now we just need to go ahead and mimic this. <clears throat> so because um, Dynamics have tried to stick to what people know, this is where they've reintroduced the debit and credit columns. So what I can do now is literally just mimic exactly as per the uh, journal in Excel. So 1310349, 150, 900, 76955, 90871, 90871, and 100. And you'll see here that it's balanced. 
So total debits, total credits is balanced. More importantly, you see the VAT column. There is no VAT interaction at all. I can't stress how important this is. If you accidentally set a nominal up incorrectly, or you select the wrong nominal and you make this journal, if there is VAT set up against the nominal, you're going to post a VAT. You're going to post a VAT and either claim VAT back or pay VAT that you shouldn't. Both are pretty bad. So again, just stressing with this VAT. Um, so a couple of tricks now. One of the ones that I recommend you do before posting any journal, if you go to Actions, Functions, Preview Posting, this will actually allow you to see how this journal is going to affect the nominals. And it's just a run through. So you, you're back to your positive and negative, but you can see how each account is going to be hit. And again, it's just a really good uh, check. It's something that I recommend that you do. It's something that we do. Um, I just can't stress enough that when you're when you're journaling, it's really important that you do you do this check. Now to make this quicker, the next time you do the wage journal, before we post this, if you go to process, save as standard journal, and we're going to make one called wages, and we'll just say wages journal, and we'll just click save amount as well, and press OK. So I'm just going to mimic just um, deleting all of this journal. Um, so select more, manage, delete. So let's say uh, we're at the following month and we want to do the journal again. If we go process, get standard journals, wages, we've got that journal back again. So I don't need to do the translation. It's all here. It's just a case of um, the report you get from your payroll software. You just simply fill the journal in and it becomes much quicker. So we're going to test posting this now. So we're going to post the journal, then we're going to take a quick look at the chart of accounts and just see how it's interacted with the chart of accounts. So if I go to process post, do you want to post the journals? You need to make sure that the date is correct, which is really important. The document number should self populate. So you can just leave this and currency code, you just leave blank. Okay, so the journal has been successfully posted. So I'm just going to maximize dynamics now because we don't need the Excel spreadsheet anymore. So if I go to chart of accounts and I want to look at how this, this has all been affected. If I scroll down to we'll look at the profit and loss side, you see we've got the costs against the wages now and the cost against the national insurance as well. So it's um, successfully hit the profit and loss. It's hit the balance sheet, hit the trial balance. Um, yeah, it all looks all looks pretty good to me. So that is how you work with wages, um, wage journals and general journals. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, please let me know.